Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities! Today we're going to be going over another skill or ability uh, that is on the trap tree and that is Wake of Inferno. Not exactly the most amazing ability. Let me tell you what. So Wake of Inferno is one of those odd abilities that doesn't really live up to its name. It says it does massive amount of damage per second of 9,000 damage per second. And if we were to run a calculation real quick and we said, okay, well, 9,000 damage per second uh, times five of them equals 45,000 damage per second, right? So we should be looking at some pretty crazy numbers. Um, and uh, if we go out and we actually use it in practice, though, one of the things that you'll find out is it doesn't really do anywhere near as much as it says. Yes, it can kill the occasional target, but for the most part, it's not all that amazing. Um, one thing is it's very single target in nature. Um, another thing is that not only is it very single target, but it applies its damage very strangely. And I need to show you on a sorceress to really get a good feel for this. So um, Inferno, which is the same ability that is Wake of Inferno, um, is an ability that has a very odd nature to it. Let me uh, see if I can show you this. So if we grab Inferno and we use it, and we use it in a line, it looks like it's just a line, right? A really long, unbroken line of, of fire. However, one thing that I can tell you to do is that if you do this and you spin around really fast like this with your mouse while holding down the button, you will notice all of a sudden that it's not a line. It's actually composed of a ton of tiny little segments. Each little segment represents a portion of the damage, not the actual damage that's being done. So for instance, when it comes to Inferno, if I were to just use one little doojank, one little sprout, you know, whoosh, whoosh, like that at the target, and let me take this off of my Merc so he stops being a, 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 a OP little, little bastard. Um, but if I just fire off like one of these at a monster, you notice it doesn't really do that much damage. The, the individual chunks of the of the Inferno don't really do that much damage. However, if I hold the button down over a target and have it hit the target repeatedly, as you can see, it does do a pretty significant amount of damage to that one target if you can make sure that they're being hit by all of the segments. And this is really kind of what it comes down to is that it's very difficult to hit the monster with all of the segments. The first main issue with the segments is that they're very small. The segments of the uh, of the attack are actually so ridiculously small in terms of their size. I believe they're actually like a half pixel or something. So if you miss the target with it, it does no damage. If the target is moving, there's a very good chance it will do no damage. Um, if you want to get the full damage numbers that are rated on the ability, um, you have to actually have the monster standing still, letting you basically hit them with the full force of your ability. So for instance, with like a zombie or something like that that doesn't move very fast, you can melt them relatively quickly because you can hit them with each segment of the ability, right? So you can continually hit them with all of the segments, dishing out the massive amount of damage. Well, the problem with the um, Trapsin and also the um, the Sorceress's ability is that you really can't guarantee that all of the segments are actually going to be hitting a target. In some situations, when the targets are standing still and they let you hit them, then yeah, there's going to be some situations where you're going to be able to hit a target, you know, some pretty pretty easily uh, with all of your Wake of Infernos. But most of the time, monsters don't like to stand still. They're moving around. They're trying to kill you. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, and those things that are going on are basically preventing the Inferno from ever dishing out its maximum damage. So if we can make the monster stand still, we can get the full Inferno effect on a target. And as you can see, it does pretty good damage if you can make the monster stand still. However, if the monsters are running around, if they're not be behaving, um, what you're going to notice is that the Infernos will often not kill anything because the monsters are moving around too much, and the Infernos are basically just missing them, and so it's not really doing a whole lot of damage. Getting them to stand still is half the battle when it comes to Inferno, and it's definitely not good for 
large groups of monsters, in my opinion. Um, in fact, in most situations, when it comes to large group of monsters, you are far, 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 far better off utilizing Wake of, Wake of Fire, which Wake of Fire is actually very good at dealing with large groups because it's a large AoE effect. And the large AoE effect will hit all of the monsters at the same time, dishing out all of that damage to every single monster within its radius. Um, which means that you don't have to worry about whether or not it's actually hitting the target. However, in the situations where you have a monster who is standing still and who is not going anywhere, if you can hold them still and you can dish out this Wake of Inferno damage, then you actually can get pretty good damage numbers out of this ability because it's 9,000 essentially times the total number of damage and then whatever other bonuses you may have which add up to a pretty decent amount, right? So if I have a monster and I can get him to stand still, as you can see here, the amount of damage that it can do under a circumstance where you have the monster standing still is actually pretty good. It's not bad. Um, it's not the most amazing thing in the world. There definitely are other things that are better than it. But the problem is, is that you really can't get good damage out of this ability without focusing all of the, the, the little things on the same place, which is the, which is the first problem. Um, the second problem is is that <laughs> uh, if they're moving, it's not going to dish out much damage. The third problem is also placement, believe it or not. You don't want to place your, your um, inf Wake of Infernos like this. Um, and the reason why you don't want to do this is because you want them to all stream in the same direction, and you want all the damage to be focused in the same place. So let me see if I can give you an example of this. So in this particular situation, I have a bunch of them standing here trying to beat me up, right? Um, the best place to put them would probably be right here. As you can see, they'll go through the entire pack and hit four of them at the same time. And all five of them were firing in the same place, in the same direction, focusing their damage in that spot. Um, so when you're using this ability, you got to make sure that you're focusing the damage right. I would always recommend that you put them all in the same place. Um, make sure that they're always in the same exact spot because you want all of the Wake of Infernos to be focusing in the same exact position, doing all of their damage to the same targets. You also want to make sure that just like with the Amazon, um, you know, like Javazon, you want to make sure that you're lining up the Inferno because it does go through targets. You want to make sure you're lining up the Inferno so that it is also going through targets if you're going to be using it against more than one monster. So like in this particular case, I would put it right here so that it goes through one quill rat and hits the other quill rat. This allows you to get more damage out of it if you are lining them up. Um, it is not exactly the best ability in the game, but used properly, you can get some pretty good benefit out of it. And if you're going with a Wake of Fire build anyway, it is going to be something that's going to be in your arsenal for use. Now, I would definitely recommend that you use it, because Wake of Inferno is definitely one of those abilities that is better than Wake of Fire in very specific examples. Like, for instance, if I was fighting um, Diablo, um, I probably wouldn't want to use Wake of Fire, because Wake of Fire is less overall damage on a single target. Assuming, of course, I can hold Diablo still. If Diablo's running around like a crackhead, it's not going to work. But if you can hold Diablo still and use Wake of Inferno, you can get the massive amount of damage on Diablo, essentially, uh, fairly easily, right? Um, it's gonna it's gonna hit him, and they're gonna they're gonna focus fire all their damage on him all together at the same time, and then of course you can do whatever else you're doing at the same time, so you can get the full damage output. Let's get them right here. Not bad. Um. Recently, with a lot of the changes, um, traps have definitely seen some pretty pretty awesome buffs. Uh, first off, traps now work with negative resistance, so this is very important. Um, negative resistance was not capable of working with traps before. Traps also took up the spaces of elite monsters. That no longer happens. And on top of this, um, they're no longer affected by next hit delay problems either. Um, now, I don't remember Wake of Inferno ever having any next hit delay problems, but Wake of Fire did. And so now that when you're building Wake of Fire, you can utilize Wake of Inferno, you know, as you see fit, obviously. So so it's not going to be your main skill. In fact, you're probably going to be using Wake of Fire the majority of the time. But in those unique situations where you're dealing with one monster, 
and they're standing still, League of Inferno can be useful. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we're talking about the lowly Wake of Inferno. And uh, as always, keep watching.